All right, folks, and welcome to Desmos tutorial number three. In this one, we're going to look at the important question of how to make images move. So, as you can see on the screen, I've uploaded Squidward here. I have also three jellyfish that I imported as well. And as you can see, they will show up on this side here, all of your different images. That'll be your, and this is kind of like your workspace, the side you can use to edit. You can also click, drag, resize things. Um, to make them normal size, whatever you feel is normal. And there we have our scene. Later on, I'll show you how to set backgrounds and remove the axes so it really looks like a cartoon. Um, but for right now, let's just show how we can make our images move and move towards acting out a scene. So Squidward's in a moment of peril. Let's say we want these jellyfish to be attacking him or heading towards attacking him, and we want Squidward to be running away. Also, just remember Desmos, if you accidentally do something like that, zoom out to 1500, just press Command-Z or undo, and it'll bring you right back to where you were. The type of mouse I have, it always zooms like that. It's very sensitive. I accidentally zoom sometimes. But let's say we want Squidward to run away in a basic way. So you're going to need a function. So we'll add an expression to function. Um, let's just say Squidward's running away towards the top right. So I'm going to use... You know, f of x equals x is my function. And let's say I want Squidward to move along this function. Basically, the idea is going to be, if you think back to our task of modeling, when we modeled things with, you know, kidney stones, jumping stilts, and ice skating, we use conics to model uh, different items. We did it earlier in the year. You can use all different kinds of functions. We did a Ferris wheel problem. Anytime you're using a function to uh, represent a real-world phenomenon that's known as modeling. So you decide, think in your mind, have a vision, imagine how you want Squidward to move, and then you're going to come up with a function that matches that. So this is very basic, f of x equals x. Now then I go to the Squidward image. If I want him to move along this, uh, I, you know, it's not going to do anything, there's no movement now. We're going to want to add a slider, um, but the easiest way to do it is pick another parameter such as c, Add slider C, okay, I always like to put my slider up at the top. I'll show you that later on the organizing page. And if we want Squidward's center, you know, to move along this line, then the X value will be C, and the output value, well, if we're referring to function F, we'll use F of C. Enter, or just click off of it, and now, when you play this slider, let's move it back and forth, you'll see Squidward will move along the line. So if I press play here, we have Squidward running away at a steady rate. So immediately, oh, also, so he's going to cycle back and forth. But if you want this to play like a movie that you can replay, just click this button here next to the speed, both arrows going forward, and then it'll simply recycle the scene. You're going to use one slider to perform each scene or act out each scene of your story. And you can slow down the speed or speed it up as much as you wish. But this is the basics of Squidward in a moment of peril. But let's get a little bit more advanced. Suppose you don't want Squidward to be moving at the same rate, just kind of floating away like that on a straight line. Suppose you want him to, you know, move slowly at first and then zoom off the page as the jellyfish get close. Well, think about what type of function would provide that for you. Uh, maybe x squared, you know, will go up and down, but I'm thinking more along the lines of going slow at first and then zooming off the page. I'm thinking exponential. I'm thinking exponential. And remember with your slider, okay, we're gonna start Squidward over here and then he's going to go slowly, and then he's going to zoom off the page. That's what an exponential function does. It goes slow at first, and then it zooms off. Okay, so let's see if we can rig this timing accordingly. Also, notice you can change your slider. If I want Squidward to move more to the left and right, click on the slider, and he will go more in those directions. Let's say he will start over there at negative 15. He'll be over there, Jellyfisher awfully close to him. So let's start them further away. Now we're going to get more advanced here, so let's get our jellyfish moving. And we want them to be going towards Squidward. 
They could be going in a linear fashion if you want to keep it simple, or you could always make it more complex. Um, let's do linear though. Let's say they're moving, you know, g of x equals x will be a straight line. Um, we want to go towards Squidward where he currently is. So you can fool around with the parameters, something like x plus 10. Okay, let's say I have one jellyfish along that. And so therefore that'll be this jellyfish. I'll use C again, because we only want to use that one slider C. And then G of C will allow him to move along it. Keep in mind, now look how he's starting on top of Squidward. That's because the X values are the same. See how the C value is the same? For both of them, C value is negative 15. I don't know why I'm yelling, sorry about that. But the C value is negative 15. So if both of these centers have the X coordinate of C, that means they're going to start in the same spot on the X axis here at negative 15. Or if you picture a vertical line here, they both have to start there. And when I move the slider, they're both gonna stay lined up vertically. Now, if we don't want that, if we want the jellyfish to start further back, then we need to move the jellyfish. So see where it's C here? What expression will allow us to move to the left? Well, let's subtract a few units. Let's subtract, it, say, 8. Okay, and that'll move it to the left. But if we want it to, you know, line up with the function that we used, we want the input to match the output. So if C minus 8 is the input, then we need to put C minus 8 in the parentheses there for it to move along this line. And then we have our jellyfish. Let's say we want this jellyfish to attack also, um, but this guy will do, you know, C minus four, let's say, and let's do G of C minus four. Okay, so he's starting a little closer to Squidward. Eh, it's a little too close. I'm gonna back him up to uh, 7.5. But let's say I don't want him to start right on this line. Remember, i got to match the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. There's a longer tutorial, because I'm going to more advanced details here. You can watch, pause, and do whatever you need, and refer to this again later on. But this is really the crux of how you make a good story, is getting into the nitty-gritty details of setting up each uh, jellyfish. So we have C minus 7.5, and let's see, did I, did I lose him there? Where did my other jellyfish go? Oh, they're on top of each other. Okay, they're on top of each other, which is why you can't see this one. C minus 7. So say I want him to appear now. Well, you know, you could make a whole other function in a line that he moves along, or you could just shift this up a few units. Let's add, you know, 5, 6, 7, whatever you want to add to it, we'll shift it up. Uh, if we don't want to start there, let's start back a little further. Minus 10, minus 10, and then I shifted him up. Remember how vertical shift is added on to the end, usually like a plus K, and you can do whatever you like. Put 18, put him up there. You play around with it. It's your story. But now we have two jellyfish that will be attacking Squidward. And he zooms off. But we want to refine this a little bit. Um, so this jellyfish here, they're both kind of going after him. Uh, say we don't like the fact that he's uh, zooming or not going exactly towards Squidward. See how he's going up? Well, you can always make, you have the option of making a new function for that jellyfish. Um, so you can go to a new for different expression. We'll bring it down here. And you could have h of x equals something with this, uh, a shallower slope. Let's say, you know, 0.4x. Something like that. And then instead of G for this jellyfish, you can use H. And I think you might get a better result based on the look. And if you want to see what it's going to be like without the pictures, there are the grids. We can take those away. Something a little more accurate. All right, and you can play around with it as you like. Perhaps you want to get creative. Well, for the third jellyfish, let's say, we want him to kind of follow Squidward's exact path. Maybe not exact path, but something similar. And we'll use, remember you can use just different letters. You have to use function notation. You can't use Y equals. And yeah, you want to, you don't have to add a slider there. Equals, and say we want a curved path. 
Uh, how about something that you know goes up like that? You can use another exponential. Another exponential to follow Squidward. Uh, what's another type of exponential? I don't know, 2 to the x. Something like that. We could chase Squidward with 2 to the x. Um, we could also do a different type of function, like a y parabola, 0.05x squared. Um, we'll just have to shift it accordingly. So if I want to move this parabola to the left, think about your vertex form. X minus 5, let's say. Oh, that's to the right, sorry. Plus 15. And we want to go down, down, down. Okay, we're going to have to move them over a bit more, though, to follow Squidward's path. And let's make it a little less of a... Ah, now we're cooking. Okay, this is going to look like he's going right after Squidward. They're kind of tag-teaming him. So we want this jellyfish to move along T. We go to here again, C is the input, and the function will be T of C that we are using for the output there. Uh, we want to start him behind Squidward though, so let's do you know C minus 10, 11, and T of C minus 11. And here we are. I think this is going to be a pretty good scene. Let's dim those functions away. I'll even drop out the grid lines so it looks like a legitimate cartoon. And we're going to play it and see how it looks. Squidward in a moment of peril. Enjoy. Okay, and as you can see, it's not perfect. You're going to have to fiddle with the editing. Perhaps you want something more to happen, and you can do that on your own. You could add more jellyfish, more movement. You could have Squidward being chased in a different fashion, and that is up to you. It's your story. Do what you like. Thank you for watching this longer video tutorial uh, number three.